Now at 11, the call that shook the sports world. We have a rollover with someone uh, trapped. He said his name was Tiger, and I and I looked at him, and I was like, oh, yeah, that, you are Tiger Woods. The golf legend seriously hurt in a crash. His only way out? Through the windshield. He seemed calm, and he did not seem in pain. Tonight, new details on Tiger's condition and the recovery of a man who really transcends the game of golf. Tiger has inspired an entire generation of the sport. Very rare we say that about any athlete in any sport. And good evening, everyone. I'm Colleen Williams. And I'm Chuck Henry. We have been covering this story live on our newscast here on NBC4, as well as reports for the better part of this day. And tonight, our reporters have been out gathering the latest information on the crash and Tiger Woods' condition. And we're going to begin right now with the 45-year-old's recovery at Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance. NBC4's Robert Kavasik is outside, where he just got an update from doctors. Robert? And here it is, Chuck and Colleen. We are told Tiger Woods is awake, responsive, and recovering after what is described as a long surgery on his lower right leg and ankle. An investigation is underway, but the sheriff says Tiger Woods was not impaired, heading downhill on a curve when he suddenly lost control of his car. Tonight, those who live nearby continue to speculate. Every day is starting around a time when that sun breaks. It's a blind spot. You can't see nothing. What caused Tiger Woods to crash after 7 this morning in Rolling Hills Estates? I have a rollover with someone that trapped. The 45-year-old wearing a seatbelt inside a mangled SUV with airbags deployed. Thankfully, the interior was more or less intact, which kind of gave him the cushion to survive uh, what's uh, otherwise would have been a fatal crash. Tonight, NBC4 following the path of the crash, where the car, the sheriff said, was going at a greater speed than normal, went from one side of Hawthorne Boulevard, crossing a median, to the other side of the road, into an embankment, where it appears to have rolled over multiple times. He seemed calm, and he did not seem in pain. L.A. County Sheriff's Deputy Carlos Gonzalez, first on the scene. You know, what's your name? He said his name was Tiger, and I, and I looked at him, and I was like, oh yeah, that, you are Tiger. Tiger Woods. Gonzalez stayed with Woods until the L.A. County Fire Department arrived. Who's Chief Daryl Osby showing yeah. us the tool used to pry out the golfing legend through the windshield, suffering from multiple leg injuries, not able to stand on his own. They had to use a C uh, collar to secure his neck, a backboard for his spinal potential spinal injuries, split his legs, oxygen. He was rushed to the nearest trauma center, where late this evening, Harbor UCLA is confirming Mr. Woods suffered orthopedic injuries treated during emergency surgery. Bones were stabilized by inserting a rod into the tibia, better known as the shin bone. Bones of the foot and ankle were stabilized with a combination of screws and pins. I wish him a speedy recovery. And it is Tiger Woods thanking, in his words, the wonderful doctors and staff here at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. And he did not forget about our first responders writing to the Los Angeles County Fire Department and the Sheriff's Department. Your support and assistance has been outstanding. Live tonight here in Carson, I'm Robert Kavasik. Chuck, let's go back to you. All right, thank you, Robert. Tiger Woods was here in Southern California for the $9 million Genesis Invitational at the Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades. He hosted and presented the winner's trophy, but he did not play at the event. NBC4's Mario Solis joins us live right now with a look at the determination that really was Tiger Woods. Mario? Chuck, right now it's only about the future. Only time will tell how today's accident might affect Tiger's golf career. But if his history is any indication, he'll do whatever it takes to get back on the course. Drive and determination are second to none for the 45-year-old superstar born and raised in Orange County. Tiger was in town this past weekend to host the Genesis Invitational at Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades. Hence the Genesis SUV he was driving when he lost control this morning. Just yesterday, Tiger spent some time with NBA legend Dwayne Wade at Rolling Hills Country Club shooting a segment for Golf TV. David Spade, another one of the celebrities, getting a lesson from Tiger for the show. We have learned that Tiger was supposed to continue shooting today with Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert. Word of the accident broke as fellow golfers were getting ready for this weekend's tournament in Florida. Close friend Justin Thomas, visibly rattled by the news. I'm sick to my stomach. Uh, you know, it hurts to see one of your, I mean, now my closest friends. Um, 
you know, get in, a, in an accident. And, man, I just hope he's all right. From everything that uh, I know about Tiger, you know, I'm, I'm sure he will recover and he will do everything in his power to come back. I'm sure he will. Okay, we hope that is the case. Tiger just had his fifth back surgery in December and was hoping to play in the Masters this April, but now that won't happen. That is it for now. Let's go back to you guys in the studio. All right, Mario, thank you. And Tiger Woods, as you mentioned, certainly no stranger to injuries and surgeries. At least 19 have been reported during his career, including some very serious ones involving his back and his knee. In 2008, after playing through the pain, he won the U.S. Open, but then had reconstructive surgery on the damaged ACL in his left knee. That forced him to miss the rest of the season. In March 2012, Tiger withdrew from the final round of the WGC Cadillac Championship. That was because of a problem with his Achilles. Two years later, in April 2014, Tiger announced he would miss the Masters for the very first time because of surgery on a pinched nerve in his back. Now, during the 2020 PNC Championship last December, just a couple months ago, he started feeling back pain again while he was playing golf with his 11-year-old son, Charlie. And tonight, he is still recuperating from his fifth back surgery earlier this year. And despite all of those injuries, Tiger walked away with a green jacket from the Masters again in 2019, the fifth win of his career. And concern is growing tonight for Tiger Woods as more people learn about what happened this morning, that rollover crash. NBC4's Beverly White now takes a look at how Southern Californians are reacting. The news broke and I just, uh, I was in shock. And then my mom texted me um, and I was like, you know what, after work I, I have to come here and see you. Fans of Tiger Woods waited for investigators to clear the site in Rancho Palos Verdes, where his SUV left the road and rolled dangerously downhill. Grateful the legendary golfer survived, even after the evidence was hauled off. Honestly, I was just expecting a lot of like debris, uh, broken fences and, you know, people gathering around. But it's actually like nothing was really there. Tiger's, you know, so famous. I'm a golfer and... You know, it, it, uh, I wish him my best. At the Dan Miller Golf Course near Woods' TRG Foundation in Anaheim, fans recall seeing the Orange County native in his youth, a junior player in the hunt. He was great. He was just so great at, at his, his teenager. He was just so fantastically good. He was so good at what he did. It's no surprise Tiger Woods engenders deep respect from countless fans who admire his winning ways on the golf course. We also found local athletes rooting for his healing and praising his lessons for life. I mean, we're talking about Tiger Woods, who grew up in, in a, you know, in Orange County and went off to Stanford University to play the sport he loved, which is golf. And I think that's great for young African Americans in the community to learn about that, especially with this being Black History Month, that you can achieve things through education, not just through the sport part. Woods's TRG Foundation has helped more than a million underprivileged students as his golf game inspires generations. Watching um, Tiger play, it's kind of like, you know what? It's, it was nice to see a black man out there playing golf, to say, see, we can do this too. And I think that was just a little bit extra push that got me out there to take lessons and learn how to play. And I've been playing ever since. All send prayers to Woods' hospital room in hopes of better health and good deeds to come. In Torrance, Beverly White, NBC4 News. Earlier today during our live coverage, I talked with Mike Tirico from NBC Sports. He said because the golf community is so very small, news of the crash spread quickly. Pretty quickly you start texting and calling folks just to see what they heard. And um, you just realize the magnitude of it and the general relief uh, for all of us when we heard that the injuries were non-life-threatening. I, I don't think any of us are thinking about Tiger and his golf future, just thinking about uh, Tiger, who was getting to the end of his golf days and uh, just really wants to be around to be a part of his kid's life going forward. And we'll hear much more from Mike Tirico, his experiences with Tiger. That's coming up in just a few minutes in sports. Just moments ago, news chopper for Bravos over a pursuit of two cars. The driver of a BMW and a Dodge Charger were suspected of racing on the 405 freeway that started out near LAX. And then it took officers down the 105 freeway. At times, the cars were clocked at speeds between 115 and 120 miles an hour. Both drivers pulled over a short time later. A woman in the BMW and a man driving that Dodge Charger were taken into custody. 
Knocked to the ground and berated with racial slurs and threats, a Korean-American man who is also a veteran of the U.S. Air Force is speaking out about his attack now under investigation as a hate crime. NBC4's Hetty Chang has a story you'll see for the first time and only on NBC4. Denny Kim says he's still shaken up about what happened on this very sidewalk on Kenmore Avenue in Koreatown a week ago. I was terrified for my life. The 27-year-old has a black eye and a fractured nose after he says two men in an unprovoked attack threatened to kill him, calling him racial slurs before knocking him to the ground. And they started calling me Ching Chong, uh, g Chinese virus, just all, sort of, all sorts of nasty stuff. Um, they eventually struck me on my face. Um, I fell down to the ground. Kim says he has his friend to thank for chasing off the attackers and saving his life. And I was screaming and I was telling them to stop. That, you, that I was screaming at them and they were screaming racial slurs too, calling me a ch The description of the attackers too vague to be of much use. But LAPD detectives are searching for security video. They are investigating this attack as a hate crime with criminal threats. Kim not only grew up in L.A., he's a U.S. Air Force veteran who says he's experienced racism before. Throughout my career, uh, I experienced a lot of microaggressions um, because of my race. Um, I never felt like I fit in. I never felt like I belonged. Kim and his friends are joining a growing anti-Asian racism movement, bringing awareness to the 3,000 reported hate incidents against Asian Americans nationwide since the start of the pandemic. There is still this underlying fear, anxiety, and anger about the pandemic, and people are still targeting it at the Asian American community and scapegoating us. Kim wants his attackers caught, but also wants the hate to stop. What they did was not fair, and it was filled with hate, and that's something I feel like we all need to bring awareness of. Community advocates tell us those 3,000 reported cases are really just the tip of the iceberg, and of those, very few are actually prosecuted. But there are other resources out there like legal and financial help. We've posted some useful links on our website, NBCLA.com. Just do a search for hate crimes. In Koreatown tonight, Hetty Chang, NBC4 News. A rapper is called out over his lyrics. Why Kobe's widow, Vanessa, says Meek Mill crossed the line. Then freeways covered in filth, trash, and overrun by rats. An I-team report fixed one area, but what about the other problem spots? And not much of a break from the winds. They roar back tomorrow with high wind watches posted. What you can expect coming up.